is going on guys? My name is Cosmo vs Goku and welcome to our second ever Journeyman Bridge cast interview. Today I'm joined by the voice of Kisame Hoshigaki, Tai Kamiya and of course Guy Sensei MPC. Now before we get started, these interviews are only available in part on YouTube. However, the full interview can be heard exclusively on our Patreon page over at patreon.com forward slash journeyman bridge. Let's get started. How you doing today? Yeah, not too bad, man. Thank you for having me on. How are you? Yeah, yeah, I'm good, thanks. I'm good, thanks. Um, so for those who don't know, who do you play in Naruto and in Digimon? In Naruto, I play Guy Sensei, or Maito Guy. I also play Kasami. Is it Kasami? The shark face guy? <laughs> Kasame, yep. <laughs> yeah, Kasa- Kasami, yeah, they're the two I recall off the top of my head for Naruto. And for it may come as a surprise, but for... Digimon, I'm actually Ty. You're Ty. Yes, I am Ty. So you could almost say hi. You're Ty. Hi, I'm Ty. <laughs> and I, f- I believe in Naruto, you also play uh, Kabuto, and you also played Mizuki in episode one. Ah, uh, yes, I remember Kabuto. I just every time, just the dynamic between him and Orochimaru is something else. And- <laughs> just fun fact like the fun that i had recording was compounded because i believe you rightly so were for lack of a better term on my case to say hey matt seeing as you're involved in this how about you actually watch the original source material <laughs> and you'll actually appreciate this a whole lot more and then i downloaded anime lab and the rest is history thank you very much but <laughs> did it help it certainly did it Really did. I had to watch it. I had to watch it with subtitles. I can't watch it in the uh, English dub just yet. There are some anime where people prefer to watch it dubbed, and some where they prefer to watch it sub. It's yeah, they're both personal e- preference. Equally valid options, Absolutely. of course. That's why they're, they're there. Well, I would have been really upset if you'd forgotten about Little Kabuto. God, <laughs> I get. I listen to that the recordings. Oh, so when I watch the episodes, and I'm like, that's Rob's voice. Then it's, that's my voice. That's Rob. <laughs> that's me. That's Rob. That's me. And it's just, it's that, uh, no, it's like, I'm, tr- I'm trying not to blow smoke up my own butt or anything, but it's like watching your own art in so practice. So you are trying to blow smoke up your ass. Yeah. Eh, fuck it. I'm blown. I'm totally gloating. F this, F that. Fuck it, L. Whatever. That's right. Come at me, world. Hollywood, holla at your boy. I've already spoken to the others at length about how they got involved, but how did you get involved? With Journeyman abridged and Naruto for Lock abridged and Digimon Adventure for Lock abridged um, and voice acting in general. Oh, it's a just, good story. Yeah, just voice acting in general was, um, as you know, I connected with you over Facebook after working with you at a call center for, and I just I will not name said call center. Fuck this uh, shit all. Yeah, it's. God, it's a horrible place. I'm glad I'm not there. But anyway, the yeah. positive is I well, I met you for as cheesy as that sounds. And then after yeah, getting along and then seeing a lot of your acting stuff and acting activity all on your social media and seeing as theater performing that just that creative space was something I always wanted to get into and something I still want to pursue, I thought, well, why not, you know, connect and get in touch with someone who does that? Obviously, that's where our friendship grew and where you you introduced me to, obviously, some acting classes, activities. We did a pantomime. We put on a show together, just the two of us, which is really great. I really learned a lot from that. Then we, obviously, a natural branch was a voice acting, considering how well people seem to think I can do impressions of certain characters. I thought, why not explore this a bit further? And I suppose um, when you told me, hey, Matt, I'm working on this thing, I thought, well, this is just freaking perfect. <laughs> <laughs> you mentioned your impressions. What impressions can you do? Oh, you're going to make me... Oh, I'm scared you're going to get me to do them right now, and it's, it's just embarrassing. But when we did the pantomime, I, in my opinion, I butchered my impersonation of a donkey from Shrek. <laughs> uh, bl- uh, also, maybe Mushu from Mulan. And uh, just general American tourists from California. Like, hey, dude, what's up? Yeah. To- like, just like the caricature of, yeah. you know, that Amer- that American side character. And then when we had a couple friends over, I remember we were giving our sort of commentary on the US elections and I decided to do my bit on Donald Trump. That was... Uh, according to it was either Nissa or Roxy that said scarily accurate 
Come on, let's hear it. Let's hear it. Oh, God, okay. Let's hope this does it justice. Hold on. I have words. They're the best words. My hands are long and beautiful. It's well documented. Deep state operatives, China. 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 Billions and billions and billions and billions and... Yeah, it's a better life, but you get the drift. (laughs) And what's that donkey impression? What's that about? Let's hear that. I... Do I have to? Is is that is that part of my contract that I didn't sign? Come on, uh, you can't just dangle that. It's Chekhov's gun. Ah, oh, Jesus fucking Christ! All right, I haven't done this in ages, so you know what? I don't care if it's horrible because it, you put me on the spot, and yeah. So see, Fiona, check it out. Took some magic potion, and now we're sexy. <laughs> I can actually see you moving your head for that. I actually did. I can't do it without <laughs> bobbing the head. <laughs> What's the meaning of MPC? I sort of just got it from my uh, Instagram name, Matt Papa Chris, and it just yeah, just literally MPC. I thought, okay, let's think of like a just a cool abbreviation of my name that I like, and yeah, MPC just came from that. I was thinking MP3 or MP4, but that that's you know, been done by, you know... Thanks, musical encoding. Yeah, piece of shit. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck you, man. Fuck you. Um, uh, M- NPC, you can... And because I play, uh, you know, regular uh, tabletop RPGs such as uh, Dungeons & Dragons 5th Edition and Pathfinder, it's sort of linked into the whole NPC thing. So the characters that... Y- the people that your characters interact with in the world, non-playable character... NPC, so just Matt playable character, NPC. That just, yeah, just a little nerdy connection for NPC. I love it. I, I believe that wasn't your first uh, username. No, the first uh, username originally was 1047 Slade, and the reasoning behind that was because, um, you know, spoiler alert, I'm a massive uh, Batman fan in particular. Not to bring up the whole DCV Marvel BS, because I think all comics are awesome and we can enjoy art in its many variations but you know i had a special soft spot for the batman verse and the reason why slade is part of it because in the comics from what i've read slade is batman's psychotic more psychotic uh equal in terms of physical prowess his fighting skills his ingenuity and i found out this interesting comic fact where uh, 1047 was the exact time of night where batman's parents were killed and yeah. In in his in the Wayne Manor, there's a big like there's a little sort of grandfather clock looking thing, and the way he opens his secret entrance in that room to the Batcave is to just turn the handles on the clock to that time, and then it opens up really? the thing in the fireplace. Yeah, I had no idea. Yeah, comics, man. See, we can think of That's cool facts cool. too. Yeah, Rise of the Nerds. Take that, high school. Sorry, I'm projecting. <laughs> well, you touched on it earlier when you said that you've started to watch Naruto subbed on Anime Lab, but what is your relationship with the franchise that is Naruto? And I suppose more importantly, as you play Tai, your relationship with the franchise of Digimon. Currently, well, obviously, as I... Well, my relationship with Naruto obviously began purely just by voice... Obviously, just voicing the characters and being a part of the Abridged series. Then watching as those episodes were uploaded and I was watching them, I thought, okay, this this is really nice. This is like my work being in practice and then as i understood and i was getting the story that you were going with as the episodes were being uploaded and i'm thinking all right this storyline is great and this is just the parody i i have to i have to watch the original in the back of my head it's like you aren't watching the original you're doing this (laughs) how dare you insult the source material you're not worthy and then (laughs) Yeah, my mind goes weird places. But yeah, I started watching, obviously, the original uh, Naruto. I think I'm about halfway through Naruto before heading on to uh, Naruto uh, Shippuden. And listening to it, and obviously with the Japanese voices, there's so much more, I know, emotion, or there's so much more character that that doesn't translate when you record the lines for English. There's something, I can't explain it for lack of a better term, it's just something, something just projects. Gets lost in translation? Yeah, Yeah, quite literally, perfect. Yeah, it gets lost in translation, and I'll say this side note, I now know how to pronounce Sasuke properly, because <laughs> the whole time reading the script, it's like, okay, Naruto goes over to here, and he says Sasuke, but what, Suzuki's, Suzuki's mate, and it's like, no, it's Sasuke, but there's a U after the S, <laughs> Suzuki. 
Well, yes, the ja- my well, name the- is not Suzuki. Well, j- in that's Japanese, a type of car. they pronounce it this way. You fuck not. That's how you do it. <laughs> <laughs> I've never called you a fuck not. No, but people listening here will think that you have. <laughs> Yeah okay, <laughs> but well, at least I thought. At least I, that's what I thought of myself. That's um, Naruto down. A uh, Digimon. Yep. I watched a bit, like of the three major shows growing up that I watched religiously as a kid. It was Yu Gi Oh, then Pokemon, and then Digimon in that order. Like I, I you just watched on Cheese TV. Yeah, Cheese TV. Then was it Toasted TV after that? Before it got yeah, canned? it was yeah, and then it got cancelled or taken off the air or whatever happened there. Yeah, I don't know. whatever it is bastards yeah. it's like i wasn't as um emotionally attached to digimon growing up but it was still like just this awesome thing of like hey let's upload ourselves to a computer and roam around in a digital universe and just the monsters even to this day like just watching the characters fight and the digi evolutions and then there was something there was like the black rings and then the black spirals for the bad guy to do the to make the good things do the bad things and being part of the non-profit fan base parody please support the official release uh, for digimon especially is sort of like rekindling rekindling a flame if you will like touching base from something like i'm i'm literally getting back in touch with something that was you know a big part of my childhood and that's that's yeah always something i'm going to appreciate and respect even if at the time when i was a kid i wasn't as involved as i would have preferred to have been you know looking back at it so were you just more involved in Yu-Gi-Oh and pokemon and or uh, oh and dragon ball z shit i can't believe i forgot of about course that. goes without saying yeah I'm not trying to cause division amongst, you know, hardcore fans, people getting into anime and animation. There's always that weird, and I can probably say it's probably more of a toxic part of like the nerd community when someone says, oh yeah, I like anime. And we ask, oh cool, what anime did you watch? Dragon Ball Z. Cool. Anything else? Nah. (laughs) Then there's that awkward silence of, well, not, well, DBZ is a pretty good to start, but I would, I would I would call you a DBZ fan to be technical, 100% of DBZ. How about you, if you like DBZ, you might like this other anime and down the rabbit hole. That's how you get them. Oh, yeah. It's a gateway drug. Oh, my God. It's... Anime is a gateway drug to, to, uh, to anime. Yeah. Anime... I think for a lot of people, especially people our age, we we had it, our first experience with anime on a um on a wider scale, especially on a social level through oh. primary school or early high school, whatever. God. Oh my god, through remember, TV. Did you ever collect Tarzos from the chip packets? Yes. Oh my god. Oh my god. It's I like, have oh my so god, he's got the shiny Tarzo. That's the rare Tarzo. I gotta buy chips to get Tarzo. Like we were, they were funny, turning us fat. Those bastards. Yeah. Now look at us. You're ripped as fuck, and well, there's me. Yeah, well, that's because I'm vain, and I, co- I need constant validation for my aesthetic. Which one of us plays Orochimaru again? <laughs> <laughs> Anywho. <laughs> Anywho. <laughs> Growing up watching that as a kid and looking back as an adult, even nowadays when I, as of when, um, you know, my two very good friends, Rocco and Sargon, weirdly enough, COVID hasn't, affected our go-to hangout because we would literally meet up we'd either have lunch or just go to Safeway or Coles get some snacks and just binge an anime because yeah. Sargon and Rocco would be like hey guys I found an anime we can watch and I'm like cool sweet let's binge that before this current stage the restrictions were announced we had just finished um on anime lab I think it's a new one uh, called Demon Slayer I've heard of that. My wife wants to watch it so bad. I'm like, yeah, we'll get to it. We'll get to it. Yeah, you should. Uh, it, it's I, been a while, and yeah. we're still gonna get to it. Yeah, you're gonna you're gonna get to it in your own time. There's no need to rem- her to remind you every three months. It no. took her ten years to get me to finish watching yeah. Buffy. I mean, no, but we'll it's get there really, eventually. But honestly, from me watching it, I love the artwork and the graphic of the fight scenes, especially yep. like storylines. Okay. Great, hundred percent. Got to have a story and just the right amount of exposition because I love how they can have an entire life's worth of dialogue in the millisecond of like a punch or a kick being thrown. Like, wow, these guys think really fast. <laughs> oh, how many episodes is it? I believe it's only 26 in that first Two season. Two fours, wow. And we're currently watching, or well, we were, but now we have to watch it separately. Bloody pricks. Uh, this other one called Fire Force. Yeah, uh, Twisted Flames has told me about it. Yeah, get on it. 
It's got the right amount of violence, I'll say. Some good, interesting subplot. Freaky powers, which is also cool. And there's a bit of... um. From what I can tell, it's gorgeously animated too. Yeah. And once again, animated and artwork in the fight scenes. Yeah. Whatever new sh- whatever new stuff is coming out, the overall quality from everything I've seen is just fucking mint. Would you say that anime benefits from being seasonal or from being all year round? Oh, man, it's because I could see the benefits of both. Because if something is seasonal, say, I, uh, I know not to comp- you know, I'm going to compare anime to, here's an example I like. So every Easter... On every Orthodox Easter, the Greeks like to bake this um, sweet bread called sureki. And sureki is, you know, a sweet bread that is only ever served on Greek Easter okay. on that occasion. And even though I would love to have sureki all the time, it's freaking delicious. Holy crap. To have it all year round sort of doesn't make it as special as part of the occasion for Greek Easter. Of course. So it's like, I can understand a seasonal anime... You know, obviously you have more time to work on it, really invest in the quality of the animation, going over the voice acting, this, that, all the million and one things that are part of the creative process. I can understand that for being seasonal, and obviously it gives the actors a break and the, all the other creatives involved a break. But with the anime access all year round, in the age of Netflix and streaming and online this, give me this, give me now, I want it now. Why do I, I don't want to have to wait a week and a bit for the new episode. You know what I mean? It's been- yeah. In the age of like instant access, it has sort of, for me, from my perspective, it's, I'm not speaking on behalf of everybody, obviously, but from my perspective, it has taken away a bit of that, you know, that sentimentality and a bit of that meaning behind it. But because, and that the offset or the trade-off is that there is so much anime available that that minor loss of sentimentality probably doesn't amount to anything, if that makes sense. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, so that's that's why it's it's like Anime Lab, and I've also got a Crunchyroll account. For me, I watch that more than Netflix. Oh, absolutely, same. There is some anime on Netflix that actually wasn't too bad. Um, and then there was another, an, it was an animated film. It wasn't an anime. It was an animated series. I think it was called um, uh, Say Seis Manos. Never heard of it. S. It's spelled S E I S M A N O S, and it's about like. It's like based in like Mexico and you've got like this Kung Fu school in like a small Mexican town and they fight off a drug lord and there's like magic witchy bruja type stuff going on there. It's freaking dope because it's, yeah. it's, it's a lot like when you watch like some of the DC animated films, how the animation style is similar and it's violent and gory. Like they don't shy away from showing you like the blood and the bones and all that sort of violence. That That's sort of more of the shtick on uh, net, the Netflix side. There's, there are some legit animes, but yeah, no, Anime Lab and Crunchyroll, I use that more. And there's just so much available. <laughs> oh my God! <laughs> how do you have the time? How, and that's the sad thing. You know when you have so much options available, you don't do anything? You just sit there being sad because you can't watch it all? That's me when I have to edit. When I sit down to edit, I'm like, there's so much to do. I'm going to go take a nap. <laughs> yeah, quite literally. I'm like, there's so much anime to watch. I It's like, I think a friend of mine uh, a while ago uh, wanted to introduce me to a new anime. And I was like, oh, no, I'm already watching this. It's like, but it, you can, but it's, you know, you can... It's on Anime Lab or Netflix. You can watch it anytime you want. I go, no, because I'll fall down the rabbit hole. I've already committed, like, I think I'll use this for example. I'm halfway through the released episodes of Fairy Tale. Do not get me to start down this shit. I will forget the storyline because I'm already in an emotional place. Yep. Right now, I'm invested. Don't distract me from my path, <laughs> you cretin. <laughs> How dare you? I had that with My Hero Academia when I sat down and watched oh. uh, all four seasons in like a week. And... Which to some people that doesn't sound like it's a huge accomplishment, but with my busy busy schedule, that took a lot. Um, and, and it was worth it. Worth it. Yes. Worth it. Good. <laughs> so worth it. You're welcome. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you so much for listening to the second ever cast interview. We hope you enjoyed this insight into the world of Journeyman Abridged. And remember that the full interview can be heard exclusively on our Patreon page. And thank you so much to our friend Curly Sparklebud, who so kindly illustrated our avatars, which you've been able to see in this video. Be sure to check out her artwork and so much more at Curly Sparklebud on Twitter. We'll see you in the next one coming on January 10th. 
when I sit down with the voice of Iriko Umino, Obito Uchiha, and so many more, Omega.